Good morning, my name is First Lady Cherie and I have the opportunity to lead us in our candle lighting for Abbott. Our scripture reading will come from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This Sunday, we relight the candle of hope and expectation, recalling God's promises to send the Savior. As we relight as we relight the candle of preparation and peace, remember the voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now we relight the candle of proclamation and joy. May our hearts be forever filled with the joy of his coming. Let us pray. Father, we are filled with joy because we have hope and peace that you have sent your son for all that believe. Help us to be the voices that proclaim grace and truth. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you for being a part of this Advent celebration. God bless you.
Please join us as we get tidbits from Life Coach Francesca James as she helps us remain safe and sane during this holiday season. Again, don't forget to join us for our virtual Christmas gathering. For more information, please visit us on Facebook at St. Luke AME Waco. Hope to see you there. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you to our praise team for leading us in our time of worship. Thank you to my wife for leading us in our Advent reading this morning. I am Pastor Marlin, and on behalf of the officers, leaders, and members at St. Luke, we greet you with Jesus' joy. Welcome to our virtual worship experience. Our prayer is that something that is said, something that is ministered, will bless you for both time and eternity. Come on and put your blessed hands together this morning and magnify the name of the Lord. Come on and just take a moment to tell God thank you. If God has been good to you, if God has blessed you, if God has watched over you, if God has brought you out, why don't you just take a moment, open your mouth and thank God for being such an awesome God. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank him enough. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him for all that he's done, but that doesn't mean I won't try. Come on and just tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. We do serve an awesome God. Listen, just a couple of reminders this morning. Uh, this week, we will have our first quarterly conference on the 17th. Uh, I do encourage all of our leaders to participate. We will be sending out the Zoom link so that you can get uh, dialed in and make sure that we uh, have a good showing for our presiding elder as we share what the Lord has done in the life of our church this quarter. God has done some amazing things and we want to testify to the goodness of the Lord. I do want to apologize for the technical difficulties that we had this week uh, for our Wednesday prayer. We have worked those out. Amen. We are all learning and we all are all adapting uh, to these virtual platforms. And so what we have done is we have removed uh, the wait feature on our Zoom so that if you have the passcode, all you have to do is call in. You don't have to wait. You are automatically admitted into the Zoom room. And so we thank you uh, for your patience as we continue to learn and navigate uh, this new technology. It's giving time. Amen. You ought to celebrate. It's giving time. Hallelujah. If you have a little bit to give, you ought to say thank you. Amen. I do believe the word of God to be true that I once was young and now I'm older. Amen. Now I'm older and I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging for bread. We do believe here at St. Luke in the give, save, live principle. That is the stewardship principle that guides us. We give our first 10% to God. We save 10% for ourselves and then we live off the rest. Give, save, live. It is a stewardship principle that will bless your life. And at this time, we do invite you to give. We want to say thank you to all of our members and all of our friends and the family here at St. Luke that continue to support the ministry. We thank God for you. This is the opportunity to be a blessing to this ministry. This is an opportunity to sow into good ground. And how many of you know that you reap what you sow? Amen. When you sow into good ground, hallelujah, you will reap a harvest. And I thank God for all the seeds that have been sown in this ministry. For in due season, 
you shall reap if you faint not. Amen. I am so grateful this this Sunday uh, that we have sharing with us Reverend Cobb. Reverend Cobb uh, has come to us by way of Georgia. She has completed her first semester at Truett Seminary. And today she will stand as the one uh, who will proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Why don't you receive Reverend Cobb at this time? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I'm happy to be worshiping with St. Luke on today. Praise God. Thank you so much, Pastor Marlon, for affording me this opportunity to um, preach the word of God in his house on today. Let us start with a word of prayer. Most holy and wonderful God, I come to you today as humbly as I know how to tell you thank you. Thank you for affording me this chance to preach your word to your people. Let that word manifest. Let that word touch hearts, touch souls, change lives. Let that word shake up yokes. Lord, I ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The word that I want to bring forth from you for you today comes from um the scripture of ezekiel ezekiel chapter number 37 verse number 1 through 14 that's ezekiel chapter number 37 verse number 1 through 14 this is a very familiar text that i want to um, preach from on today. The scripture reads as follows from the New International Version The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley bones i mean of the valley bones that were very dry he asked me son of man can these bones live can these bones live i said sovereign lord you alone know then he said to me prophecy prophecy to these bones and say to them um, excuse me prophesy to these bones and say to them dry bones hear the word of the lord this is what the sovereign lord says to these bones i will make breath into you and you will come to life i will attach tendons to you and you will make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin i will put breath in you and you will come to life then you will know that i am the lord so i prophesied as i was commanded and i as i was prophesying there was a noise a rattling sound and the bones came together bone to bone i looked and tendons and flesh appeared upon them and skin covered them but there was no breath in them then he said to me prophesy to to the breath prophesy son of man and say to it this is what the sovereign lord says come breath from the four winds and breathe into the slain that they may live so i prophesied as he commanded me and breath and bre breath entered them they came to life and stood up on their feet a vast army then he said to me son of man these bones are the people of israel they say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone we are out of off therefore prophesy and say to them this is what the sovereign lord says my people I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel when you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. 
when I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land then you will know that I the Lord have spoken and I have done it declares the Lord mm. the title that I want to place over the scripture for this morning is it's not over until God says it's over it's not over until God says it is over see this morning I want to talk a little bit about joy hope and go forth and celebrate that God is who he is I am excited today because God is good see not only is he good he's faithful he's merciful he's just he is a loving God. He is kind. He is a provider. He is a way maker. He is a deliverer. He is a healer. He is a very pleasant help in our time of need. And Lord knows we need him during this time. His name is a strong tower that we can run to and be saved. See, the Bible says in Romans 8, 31, that if God be for us, who can be against us? See, no matter what you are going through, God is still on your side. God still has a plan for you. Even when times get hard, even when things look like they will not get better, even when the walls seem to be closing in, I want you to know that it is not over. Don't give up. Keep walking with your head held high. Keep walking with your feet pointed straight to the ground. Keep walking and don't throw in the towel just yet. Though it may appear that all hope is gone and though it may appear that you cannot find your joy, though it may appear that everyone else is finishing the race without you, but let me tell you it is not over yet see only god has the final say in your life your boss does not have it the doctors do not have it the counselors do not have it god has the final say over your life and he says it's never over when he is in the in your midst see in ezekiel 37 god shows that no matter what the situation looks like it is never over until he he says it's over God takes Ezekiel to a graveyard it's a cemetery full of dry bones God wanted to show him a people whose hope had died and joy was gone whose hope had been dead for a very long time see this is a situation where there was no future for these bones there was no hope for these bones this was a dark valley full of dry bones there was nobody just bones and no signs of life and the Lord asked him a question that God is asking you today about your situation can these dry bones live can you live again can you ever get out of the valley that you are in can you ever forgive them enough to get back to living your life living your peace living in your joy you see ezekiel looked at these bones and he saw that there was no possibility of life in these bones there was not a single chance that life could be brought back to these bones see ezekiel said there seems to be no human solutions 
for these bones. He thinks this is a hopeless situation and the bones were very, very dry and it looked like all hope was lost. It looked like no one could ever turn around what had already happened to these bones. I'm going somewhere with this. Just stay with me. See, it looked like no one could ever turn around what happened to these bones. So Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. See, in other words, he is saying, I don't have a clue what's going on here. God, I have no idea what you want me to see. God, I really don't know. But God, you know. See, God, I have been living this long for a very long time. And God, I have been walking in this bad report for a long time. See, God, people have walked out on me and people have left me. See, I don't know if I would ever get out of this valley that I'm stuck in right now. But God, you know, you know my situation. See, Lord, you know if it's going to work out or not. And God, you know if you are going to heal me. And God, you know if you're going to deliver me. And God, you know if I'm going to make it out or not. God, I am dependent on you because you know. You see, it wasn't an accident that God sent him to a place that seemed like all hope was lost. See, it wasn't an accident that there was no life left in that situation. God wanted to show him. He wanted to show him that even in the deepest, darkest valley, where all hope seemed to be lost, even when the flesh was gone off the body, even if there was nothing there, it was not over until God said it was over. Jesus stood at the grave of a man who had been dead for four days. When doctors said it was impossible, when his own family had given up, when the last words were said at the funeral, the master still had a few words left. And he who had been dead for four days came up out the grave. See, I come by to tell you that it is never over until God says it is over over see we can't completely depend on what we see before our eyes because even in the bible Nebuchadnezzar thought that it would be over for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. And he heated up the furnace seven times hotter than before. And I think God was the one that made him do it. Just to show him who really was in charge. They took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and put them in the fire. And just when we thought it was all over. They looked, and there they were, four guys, four men in the fire, and one was like the Son of Man. See, they thought by putting them in the furnace, it was over for them. But see, God said it wasn't over. Another situation, Job's wife thought it was over and encouraged her husband to curse God and die but the Lord didn't say it was over God gave Job everything back he lost and then some see weeping may last for a night but joy comes in the morning see it's not over until God says it's over see a marriage can come back together and a family can come back together a church can come back back together a business can come back together a dream can come back together see hope can come back together I'm here to tell you today that you have to keep fighting you have to keep praying you have to keep pressing you have to keep moving you have to keep reading you have to keep believing you have to keep trusting you have to keep pushing forward see I love that there's nothing 
too hard for our God. There is nothing that our God can't handle. See, he is limitless in his powers and his ability. See, there is nothing that God cannot do. And there is no situation that he cannot turn around. See, things that look like they're impossible to us is possible to him. There is nothing that he can't handle. There is nothing that he hasn't seen before. There is no sickness that's too great for God. There is no problem too overwhelming for God. There is nothing impossible when you have God on your side. See, just look at all the healings in the Bible. See, one of the things that really stood out to me is how many of these people faced desperate situations and they were up all night worrying, fretting, tripping over what was to come next. They had lost all faith and they had lost their joy. But they came, but then they came to Jesus and they walked away free. So I'm here to suggest today that we let go of everything that we are worried about and just give it all to God and let Jesus take you by your hand so you can be set free. See, Jesus turned their situations all around because it's never over until God says it's over. See, I'm telling you to hold Hold on just because it may look like the end, just because it may look hard, just when it looks like you can't take any more, just because you think this is over, game over. I want you to take a step back, look at your situation, and stand proud and say, God says that the race is not over, the game is not over. I am not finished. I am not done. I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep going forward. I'm going to keep stepping because God says that if he is in the midst that it is not over until he says it's over. Yeah, it's not over until God says it's over I'm telling you to keep holding on just because it looks like the end just because it looks dark and you can't see the light it's never over till he says it's over no matter what all these people were going through they came into contact with Jesus and they were set free God turned it around for them and he can turn it around for you there's nothing in the past that God would not be able to help. See, I want you to take time and think about your situation. Think about all the things that may have been troubling you, everything that may have been sitting on your mind, everything that may have been bothering you, keeping you up at night, keeping you off balance, off of your game, off kilter. I want you to think about all of that and give it to God. See, God is a God who can change anything and turn any situation around even when the doctors have given up hope and says there's nothing else they can do. God says, I have the final say. So Jesus is the great physician who can. See, he can do what is needed and he can do what is is necessary if we put our faith in God and stand forth and say I am and I will and I can believe anything that God has put before me I will and I shall continue to press forward and do all he has before me it ain't over till God says it's over it's necessary that we remember that the enemy was put before us to deter us, to make us sad, take our joy, take our peace, shake us up, shake us up and stir us around. We have been placed before God. We are God's children. And everything that he has before us has been written before we even know it. So I want you to go.
Keep doing what you're doing. Keep dreaming the big dreams. Keep working hard. Keep pressing for what you want to do because it's not over. It will never be over until God says so. Amen. Amen. It's not over. And you just ought to tell yourself that it's not over. No matter what that situation looks like, no matter if you are surrounded in a valley by dry bones, you've got to encourage yourself and you've got to testify that it's not over. Amen. God is a God of resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. And no matter what we face, no matter what we're up against, we don't throw in the towel, but we trust the Lord. And after we've done everything that we can possibly do, we stand. And we trust that God will work things out. It's not over. Be encouraged. It's not over. Be encouraged, my brothers and my sisters. If you've got God, you've got more than enough. For, for, for I believe the greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You are an overcomer. And you just ought to testify this morning that it's not over. Listen, as we prepare to close this worship experience, I just want to pray a quick prayer. I want to pray a quick prayer and ask God to bless all of those who are worshiping with us to give you the strength to continue this fight because it's not over. Listen, bow your head, close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we celebrate you for you are the God of the impossible. You are the God who makes a way out of no way. We thank you, Lord God, for the wisdom and revelation shared today through your word that it's not over. Encourage the people of God. When we feel like quitting and we feel like giving up, fill us with a fresh anointing that gives us the power and the strength to continue this journey. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for making us the comeback kids. God, we thank you for your resurrection power. God, we thank you that no matter what it looks like and no matter what it feels like, it's not over. God, be with your people. For this is our prayer in Christ's name. And the people of God said, amen praise God. Would you receive the benediction this morning? May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, hence now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.